Hey Chase! There we go Proxy! Episode 3! Welcome back to my reactions. Uh, last time, in episode 2, there was an attack in the mall. And um, yeah, the, the, the people died because they were killed. And that was a lot of people. There were auto raves praying, there were death, there's investigations going on, there's a conspiracy going on, and uh, Iggy is being not really hijacked but being entirely monitored by the, uh, Riel's grandpa and the grandpa doesn't really want Riel to do anything anymore because it might mess with their plans. Now that they think about it, not much happened in the last episode. It's more like so many things were being set up in that episode. That's what it felt like to me. So yeah, it's fun. It's By fun, I mean it's depressing and psychedelic. It, it's, it's, yeah, it really just reminds me of stuff like Lane. Seriously, except Lane is even more of an acid trip than this. Because Lane is entirely an acid trip, and that's the point, is that you're supposed to get your own message from it. And this one has its me merits to it, has messages that it's concretely there. But it's also weird. Like, it's not going to tell you anything at all with it. So, yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. Let's do this. There's gonna be two versions of this reaction video. Excuse me. A picture in picture version, which you can find in the description below, and a time piece version, which you are watching right now. If you want to sync up your own media to the time piece version, you can do that with a five cent countdown. It's gonna count down for five because that's what they do, and zero is the same thing. My videos are playing on my screen. Uh, I wanna say right now, I have not slept for the past 27 hours. I will, I slept a bit for like 20 minutes. It was great. <laughs> now I have, I'm pumped with caffeine and I'm ready. I'm very jittery and I pee every 10 minutes. <laughs> Let's do it, it's timer. My light is being... Move a bit, move a bit. Not, not too much, that's... Just a bit. There we go. What was that? What was that? That's the train. I'm using the PGS subs because uh, this, those are better. I just... Went through the entirety of episode one, and the first sub that I used were bad. Is this Vincent? Yeah, it is because of the, it's the symbol, the necklace. Ooh. That's very noisy. Whoa! Okay, now it reminds me of Devil Man. <laughs> Earlier it was Lane. It's going upwards. Because I thought they were uh, meteors going down to Earth, but no, it's going upward, so maybe missiles? Light! Fix- No! Light! Okay. Light. <sighs> okay, it's glitching. <gasps> We're in the wired! Sorry. And it fades into that person, nice. And when we're in reality again, fellow citizens, we left that thing there. Is that a communicator or is that a bomb? <laughs> Those are the two things I can think of right now. That is Vincent. I feel like there's lens space because of how bright the light in front of me is. I'm fixing it right now. How about that? No, it's still bright. Better. This was after the the attack, I guess. Yeah, it's a communicator. That's a nice shot, actually. Very simple, conveys emotions perfectly well. Okay. 
There's an opening! There's an opening! Okay, I'm gonna get into this. PIP, please check out discussion portions, YouTube channel. You know the deal. Okay, light, fuck off. I need to, I need to check the OP. I think I'm gonna like this. English! It's very airy and uh, almost drunken. Uh, like, hey, the kid. Someone needs to tell me if that that really is a woman or not. That's the person that he saw, I think. Ooh, that's a nice shot. This is like early 2000s uh, alt-rock music. <laughs> I'm into it. I'm so into it. Who knew that the guy that grew up listening to My Chemical Romance and the likes who likes this? <laughs> There's a lot of noise in the opening. It's a. Uh, I honestly couldn't tell what some of the things are there. We, yeah. In the, like behind that. Okay, leap into the void. Okay. Like behind all the noise, sometimes I couldn't tell what what was there. Riel, I love Riel. Like not in a waifu way, but in a. She's just an interesting character right now. Grab that, okay. Oh, I thought she said that out loud. <laughs> um... Someone's trying to hack into it, maybe? Oh! Oh! I love sci-fi keyboards. Nothing written on them. How to figure it out? A. Hey. This is the shop with the kid. This is the place with the kid, right? Who is this? Ah, oh, is that Raul? Okay, interesting. Ah, oh, just the Discord. Okay. Wow. He seems to not like whatever happened here. This is the place with a kid in the piano, right? No, this is not that one, the one before this. Vincent, with your gun. Sci-fi gun. Yeah, it's the child who was infected, right? Oh, someone dead? Dude, dude, aren't you supposed to be like... Uh, that's an auto rave? It's a dead one. Huh. Isn't this guy supposed to be like a fighter? Okay, so he's always kind of scared. We kind of left off with him and... Looking weirdly at the proxy. Like, he looked brave back then.
getting bullets. Are still being followed by the proxy? Oh, oh that was like actually a really nice cut. Boo magazine. It's not very effective. Missed. Wait. These are not being con these are being controlled by them. Okay. What did you do to the oh, to the This is squeaky. Okay, you do. Hmm? You guys are gonna die. Just those are dead flags. <laughs> hey, stealth one hundred. What is she wearing? It's like, it's like a costume of sorts. What animal is it supposed to be? A pet model. Oh, so it's not her. It's different. So that's literally her body? Yeah, no, no, that's her. Or is it different? I don't know, they look so similar. <laughs> Go up, okay. Um, is that, is that real? Yeah. Just little almost cat ears here. Like it almost. It's kind of pointy in the back. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Why do you need to contact him? Okay, ergo proxy, therefore proxy. And she's following you. Hey. Are being haunted. <laughs> are being hunted down. Go back for her. Go back for her. Whatever he, it is he did to the proxy. Okay, she, he saved her. It seems that the government doesn't like it. That is a weird mecha. That doesn't seem very efficient. Okay, and she's gonna put up the hood. Did she take it? It's real. <laughs> Don't not that. Ah, frick. My pen. My pen! My pen is spell! What? That's not the right grammar.
아. 하. 오케이. 아, oh, you, okay, you track them down. So, no life outside. Romantic, no. <laughs> okay, now destroy it. It's evidence. They might be able to track you with it. I don't know how, but... Don't just leave your phone after doing that kind of stuff. You destroy it. Or at least the, the, the whatever the equivalent of a SIM card is to the, in this world. Whoa. Okay. She's gonna carry it for you, yay! That's kinda cute. Okay, we've slowed down the pace quite a bit. It, it was already slow. <laughs> I'm okay with it. <laughs> it fits the atmosphere very well. And we get little cool cuts like that as well whenever we slow it down. Like hand on light or something like that, or we just kind of look into the environment a bit. That's kind of cool. Can't escape. That looks like a bad idea. Where is she? Okay. Okay. Flashlight. Hey, she figured out a way. Fifteen minutes gone. They are suspicious of you. It's weird. Okay. Oh, I thought you were about to hit her. Flashlight? What was that? What? What? You know, it suddenly feel like I'm watching a completely different show simply because uh, we're focusing so much on Vincent. And I still am unsure what he did. I have ideas, but... An educational point of view. I want to 
you look through this? 18. Okay. I I might take a quick break from this and just try to figure it out first. I'm gonna skim through the entire episode again and try to figure out <laughs> what exactly is happening. I have ideas, but I don't want to say them yet. <laughs> hmm. Okay. No. And run away. Oh, wow, good job hiding, dude. And being as polite, okay? Okay. Uh huh. Yeah, same question I had. Oh, that's how it got there. Oh, that's a cool way to... Oh, because he knows of the proxy now, maybe. There we go. That's well animated. Just the box. Riel, we need we kinda need your guns right now. Hey Raul. Yeah, this looks bad. It's as almost as if Riel actually set this up. And she can fight her way out of this because she doesn't have any weapons right now. That is a weirdly fitting CG. Was that CG? Looks like it for, for the first time I saw it. Now I'm not sure. Iggy. Oh! What? Is the air poisonous? Eh. Uh, Outside the city? But... Hmm... We're high up. That's where the city is. Oh no, he's gonna turn into his real self, isn't he? Whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa! A Pino is being sucked in. So, yeah, everything is poisonous outside, isn't it? The air is that toxic or something. I want to see a different look on his face right here. This is a good cut. 
Yeah, that's the face that he gave last time, last episode. He's what? Green eyes. What 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 does the word green eyes mean? Don't answer that. Suicide? I feel the need to pee. I don't think she, he's gonna die. Maybe. Well, he was in the opening, so I don't think he's gonna die. I'm better gaming this. Um, hey, the ED? I like the ED more than the OP, actually. It's kinda like... How do I describe this? It's like... It's like a soft rock ballad, but with like electro mixed in. There's so many synths in it. It's fun. And a very stylistic singing here. I think both of the OP, both the OP and the ED have very stylistic singing. The kind where you just express your emotion more so than actual technique and singing <laughs> because you could say that this is not very good singing but it's mostly not really technique but just style why am i why am i talking about it i don't know i don't know yeah that part the background where it goes i am an android something like that Let's talk about this episode. Uh, I'm gonna go pee. And probably skim through the episode before we start doing anything. So, yeah. Just to be sure that I'm not missing that many things. Let's talk about this episode. Next mission. No, this is not Spy Family, I just watched Spy Family. This episode, for, um, is very, for lack of a better term, artsy. Uh, the show, I assume, is gonna be entirely in this vein. It's kind of been that way, but it got even not really better, more like focused on trying to be a piece of art. Like, it's something around here where Vincent is falling down and it's like this. It's like, you can tell that this is weird, first of all, that suicide, yeah, and then he makes it look, he makes it look so, yeah, artsy, because it's, there's so many things you can derive from this. So let's go through the beginning first. First of all, this is a kind of a weird episode because I thought we're, we're gonna focus a lot on Riel. No, we focus on Vincent. So Vincent is on the run and met Pino while on the run and is now trying to escape the city. We later learn that basically anywhere else other than the city is dead and it invites death towards anyone else. That is, yeah. So I don't fully understand what happened in the world. I'm assuming it's something along the lines of near or actual post apocalyptic times. Or actually, better yet, what if it's current apocalyptic times? That would be kind of cool. That would be kind of cool, actually, with the whole conversations that we had, little monologues that we had about God and everything, it, it's fitting. But the thing is, is when you, is, is, I keep saying that, whenever I say the thing is, is, like that, I keep doubling the is. The thing about this is, mm, this is poetic, just, this is the most badass way to kill yourself, I'm just gonna say that right now, this is the most badass way I've seen someone kill themselves. So, Good on you! I don't think we're gonna see more Vincent then. I think he's dead. Uh, he might not be, but I doubt he will ever be able to come back to this city. So let's talk about the self-extinguishing parts of this. This is poetic. This is, this is probably my favorite part of the show so far. Just him going through his thoughts, thinking about how he tried his best. He wanted, he complied towards trying to become a fellow citizen in the city and it just fails. He can't do anything right. So, 
it's not that he can't do anything right, but it's almost as if the city is against him. The world itself is against him. And he talks about how he was never able to show his true self. And later we see like his eyes like open up and we see the green eyes and he was smiling as he just falls down to his death. It's almost as if he's saying, look, this is the real me. This is the last you're gonna see of it. It was badass and like, <laughs> I don't condone trying to kill yourself, but uh, you should, if you're gonna try, try to be as badass as this. Sorry, <laughs> let's not go there. That was, that was awful. Um, <laughs> Pino is an interesting character to have here because I don't think she's gonna be important anymore. It seems like she's kind of a little bit of a stepping stone or just something that is necessary for this much, I would say, actually growth for Vincent. Or not really growth, it's not really progression, it's development for him. We're getting to learn a lot more about Vincent just by him being silent and just this. And I get the feeling that Pino is, I am fully understand what Pino is supposed to be, but Pino is, has been very helpful. But at the very end, when he just falls down, Pino was just smiling. Like, it's almost as if Pino knows, knew that this was gonna happen. And she was helping him to get to this point for some reason. Kind of like a guardian. I, I almost want to say a guardian angel, but... I, I, what kind of guardian angel will try to push you to your death? So, hmm. Interesting. Okay. Uh, there's not that much in this episode. Again. So, I'm just gonna go through some metaphorical stuff. Uh, or no, no, no. Let's just go through the fact that uh, the pacing is weird in this episode. This episode feels completely different than the last two because the first two episodes, two episodes focus on real, right? And sometimes on Vincent, but for a very short amount of time. This was almost entirely on Vincent. That's the first difference. And then there's also the fact that it's like a lot slower. Like, I think there's barely anything that happened this episode. I, I think we can explain that in two things that happened. Uh, Vincent is running away. Vincent dies. And there's not really that much in between. If anything, the ones in between are just a wait for him to die in this story. And that's kind of how I feel Pino is. Like a bridge towards that goal. But then there's also the fact that... Okay, let's be real. First of all, so those are the two differences. But let's be real. The first two episodes were also very slow. Uh, they were almost agonizingly slow like if you don't have not really the patience but if you can't really laser focus your attention into this thing that you're watching right now it would be very boring <laughs> because mm, not much happened in those episodes still there's that's there's way more in those two than in this one it's almost as if we're making it, it, it feels melancholic, sullen. It's, it's, yeah, melancholic probably is the right word because of, and also another, another thing is the whole idea of just having this mortal fear, mortal, like the, 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 the fear of death looming above, above our perspective character throughout the entire episode. It just, it's so apparent. Okay, so there was data about the Dorothy, I believe that's her name. The one that was, that was infected, which looks almost exactly like the pet one, which just, it's just a different costume. Um, interesting. Okay. Why was this Audrey talking to him? It's kind of similar to Pino, right? It's like... Pino is also an Audrey, and it's as if these people, these androids are taking him to his death. And it's almost as if it's prophesized, if that makes sense. 
because we did get into God and the likes earlier on. It's almost as if this is part of the plan. This is this is a necessity that needs to happen right now. Um, and everything in the universe wills it, and it will happen. So that kind of uh, a part that would kind of prove that, I guess, would be when Rhea actually shows up, and suddenly. All of the security bureau are here. No, not all of them, but the ones that are chasing him. So, yeah. It's almost too perfect of a timing. Like, everything is orchestrated somehow. I like... I like... I like Dino. That's cute. She's, she's cute. But uh, also kind of creepy. Kind of in the similar vein as how the other... The other author wave was creepy, the author wave child was creepy. It's almost as if like you can feel the disconnect between Vincent who is human, I'm assuming is human, and this one who is an author wave. But they have like matching goals, not really matching, they not similar. It's like their goals co-align, coexist together properly that, 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 that they can do it together. So the, there's something I want to look at. It's about 18 minutes in. So maybe I'll, actually let's go 17 something. Let's see. So there's a conversation here. I want to look at the conversation between the four statues. Uh, wait, 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 there we go. Uh, okay, make sure no copyright. Um, we're still in the Give me, give me the statues. Well, the first statue. Congo. Their situation is all too cute. Okay, I want to see if there's like differences in how they talk or their priorities or something. Okay, so that stated a simple fact and also stated it in such a way that it's, that it's saying that this is a threat to us. This is, this is, this is not how it's supposed to be. Next one. I learned she mistake after that. Placing the blame on someone else, that's kind of cool. Not cool, just just weird. Very different to what she what the other statue just said. Okay? She the sentence are all modeled on pre-arranged information. I don't get that one. Can I? Okay, I'm gonna change some uh, files. All citizens are based on synchronized information. Okay, so kind of talking about how the control of the masses work. Uh, how is that related to that? I don't know. How is that related to that? To what they were talking about. Probably questioning the fact that Riel is going against that current. Local approximations are meaningless. And the one that is, okay, I can't find that much differences. Because I can't really tell what the statues exactly are, so I'm trying to figure out if they represent very specific things. Because uh, I get the feeling that this show is okay. So there's there's definitely gonna be layers to how we can uh, understand the show. There's the simple layer where we can just take it as cyberpunk, very atmospheric show with just just. Just, just uh, weird stories and just monsters and stuff and then then there's also the way you can take it as commentary on just humanity the world right now and everything or not just the world right now because it was made in 2006 but the world how the world works basically and there's the whole idea of the government having wanting control wanting complete control over its citizens there's the whole idea of the darkness within humanity that is displayed multiple times throughout these past three episodes. And yeah, then I was thinking somewhere along the lines of maybe these four represent something very specific along those lines. So each one of them could represent something that is related to whatever the overarching meta narrative of the story is. I can't tell right now, especially since I really can't see the statues all too well. We usually either are zoomed into their faces or we're zoomed out like this that we can't really see them all too well. So, yeah. 
I don't know yet. Maybe we'll get a good shot look at them at some point, or maybe we just get straight out some monologuing or just conversations from them where we can figure out what exactly they're supposed to be. Um I just wanna say it's kind of a joke, but I but I kinda like this one. Because I really like Rayel. She's a badass. And she's kind of a believable badass at that. Uh, there's quite a lot of female, like badass female characters that oh like they're usually easily complimented as that. But let's be real. Let's there's quite a lot of badass female characters that are strong and independent that are just tropes. That are 100 percent tropes and never really run away from them. And Riel kind of messes with the tropes a bit. Especially in the first episode, actually no, the second episode, we see like how she thinks, how she acts, like whenever in her usual self. The here, we just kind of get another badass moment of, I don't have any weapons, and then suddenly just pin into the wall. Like, I can beat you up without any. <laughs> because yeah, there's this, the, the thing is, the best way you can do a badass character is to make it so that they have different sides to them, where a lot of the time, you can make it so that uh, the badassness is the side that isn't really a huge part of the character itself. It's just kind of a little sprinkle on the top that is what they usually show in front of other characters. But, that kind of similar to Riel's case, she has a lot of uh, sensitive sensitivity in her. Like, you wouldn't really expect that. And it's not really the kind of very feminine kind of... like. Like, not overtly feminine kind of sensitivity. It's like... It's like she cries. Uh, not, not cries, but she, she she sympathizes for androids. That kind of stuff. It's, or the fact that she actually cried when she was touched. I'm still curious about that. I have a theory about that in the last episode that I talked about. Yeah. So yeah, I just want to talk about that a bit because yeah. Riel, so far, I like her a lot. She, she's such a good character so far. We could fuck it up later. Like, seriously, we could really fuck it up later because she's not well... De she's not... She's well developed already. But if we progress her character in a specific direction, it'd be kind of weird. <clears throat> okay, let's talk about something. The whole idea of... Um, extremism <laughs> so I firmly believe that any idea no matter how peaceful or wonderful it is or how evil and awful it is can have consequences like all can create awful can can bring about the bad in humanity if you are way too serious about it or and also if you're it's a combination of way too serious and not knowledgeable enough about it um, the whole idea of Fighting against the government is it's kind of not new, it's anti-establishmentism. And it's, it's, a, it's a really interesting topic to get into. But I like the concept of literally, I would rather die than live in this place. That is a weird kind of protest that I don't, I don't even know if you can relate that to anything in the real world. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, what else? Do I have anything more to say? There was a great focus in his eyes. I, I was thinking if it was because it was green and it was like a specific race of people that are, I don't know, extinct or thought to be extinct or something, but I don't think that's it right now. I think it's somewhere along the lines of Riel saw a glimpse of what Vincent really is as a human and it just kind of surprised her. Not gonna lie, this scene, uh, I said I love this scene, but part of that love comes from shock factor, shock factor. This is a rather shocking scene, but it's only shocking if you're already invested at this point. And you don't even have to, in, to be invested in Vincent as a character, you just gotta have to be invested in the world. Because right now, I'm not that invested in Vincent. I don't really care about Vincent all too much. If anything, I care about Riel. I not not no. I don't care about Riel. I just like seeing her uh on the screen. She's just fun to be around whenever she's on screen. It's there's always something that's going on. 
that's the that's the reason why I like Riel. But if say Riel would would be um I don't think I'm emotionally attached to Riel as a character yet. So yeah. What else? Is there anything else I want to talk about? Let me look at my notes. Uh, let's talk about the outside world. Um and there was it was almost certain, according to someone, that if he escapes this place, even without jumping off this ledge, he would die. And I talk about how it might be post-apocalyptic or current apocalypse. I kind of like the current apocalypse idea where everything is in disarray, everything is in chaos right now in the world. And this is the one place that is sort of at peace, but it's mostly thanks to its very militant, militant uh, hold upon all of its citizens. So, yeah. What else? What else? Is there anything else I want to talk about? Uh, the air. I believe Iggy put a gas mask on Riel at some point. Because the air probably is toxic. Okay. It's 2006 or something? Somewhere along the lines, early 2000s. That makes sense. Um, because... Uh, what else? Yeah, we can add that to the commentary as well, our disregard for the environment. Actually, you know what's kind of funny? I read through so many articles about the environment a long time ago, and I still do kind of sometimes. Especially, especially since I really got into, at some point, so this is something really stupid I did but while I was bored because I got the Rona at some point and it, it kept going back and forth for into me for like months. So I got it like four times over and over. So at that point I was just bored and one of the things that I decided to try and do is I tried to make a system for myself where I could, I could research uh, credible things and one of the things I decided to research on was actually stuff about the environment and I was just looking into all the links or the sources and stuff and I would just disregard everything that did not have it that did not cite any sources it was a weird time in my life and I read through quite a bit of stuff and all I can say is there's like there's quite a bit of change that we've had since yeah around this time there were the 2000s and now with the environment we actually care for the environment oddly enough like uh, at least better than how it's usually portrayed in media so yeah like the hole in the ozone layer is almost entirely healed now that's why we never he never hear anything about it anymore so yeah uh, okay is there anything else I want to talk about? I got the air, green eyes, I talked about that. Okay, kill self, okay, I talked about that. Mm-hmm. What else? Is there anything else? I don't think there is anything else. This seems like a turning point. I don't know what's gonna happen next. But if anything, this is the part of the story where it can go anywhere, like literally anywhere. Uh, the most obvious path it can take is Riel takes it upon herself to research, investigate, and everything, everything about the city, and learn about the proxies because they're dangerous right now. Yeah, that's the most obvious w path this would go. You know what I want? I want Vincent's death to mean something. I want it to mean to a lot of people, but specifically Riel. She seems to have realized something the moment uh, she saw the determination in Vincent's eyes when he was about to kill himself. I keep saying that word, YouTube's not gonna like this video. <laughs> keep using that phrase. YouTube's not gonna like it. <laughs> um, YouTube, you know, you know YouTube, can you like actually understand when something is for actual education purposes? <laughs> because we can't, we have to use the word. What do you want me to say? Uh, self extinguish thyself <laughs> but yeah I want there to be a legacy that ha that that Vincent left 
seemed to be such an important character and I think it would go to waste if his death stayed there. If he stayed dead in the minds of other people. So yeah. Real, I want, I want more real stuff. Oh, you know what? There's something, a crazy idea just came to my mind right now. What if Vincent survived somehow and we follow him through the outside world? I don't think that's gonna happen. But that sounds, that sounds fun. That we get a perspective from the outside world and then one from the inside of the city. That'd be kind of cool. Is there anything else? I don't think so. Yeah, okay. That's it for me. If you want to see the next episode of Action and Discussion a week early, you can do that with a Patreon link below. I'm a cheap man, trust me. So, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Uh, if you want to see, if you like the video, leave a like on the video. Subscribe to your channel. A lot of fun stuff. And...